Hey, everybody, and welcome. My name is Dawn Bennett, and today we're going to talk about healing relationships in the past, present, and future. Because as you know, relationships are key to us in every aspect of our life, in our personal lives, in our intimate relationships, work, and society. So the challenge that I see with a lot of people is that they're not sure why they're having the relationship challenges that they are. Maybe there's miscommunication. Maybe they're finding themselves in their personal relationships, getting into the same patterns, dating the wrong people, getting in the same arguments with your significant other over and over and over again. So why is that? Let's talk about it this way. How many of you have heard of the unconscious mind? The unconscious mind is the part of us that drives to the store without knowing how we got there. Like, have you ever done that? Driven to the grocery store and you get there safely and you go, I don't even remember driving here. How did I get here? It's also the same part of us that goes, okay, today on my way home from work, I'm going to go to the grocery store. And then we get home and we go, oh my gosh, totally forgot to go to the grocery store. How did I do that? That is also our unconscious mind. So if our unconscious mind is driving us home, when our full intention is to go to the grocery store, what do you think it's doing in our relationships, in our career, when we're making decisions, when we're procrastinating, when we're doing what it is that we want to do in our life and not actually achieving or being able to fulfill what we wanna do? See, most of what we learn in our belief system, in how we interact with our life, we pick up from the age of eight or earlier in general. We model our family, our relationships and family, what we learn in society, our spiritual lives, in school. And this is how we learn to interact in the rest of our lives. And until we make conscious change to change it and shift what's in the unconscious, you'll find yourself repeating the same patterns over and over and over again. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever done something in a relationship and wondered why you did that or why you said that? Have you ever stayed longer in a relationship? Maybe a friendship, maybe you've stayed at a job, maybe you've stayed somewhere longer than you intended to. Have you ever had a relationship challenge. So imagine now instead that you understand what is driving you in those relationships. You actually understand what is happening unconsciously. What need is getting fulfilled when I'm doing things that aren't necessarily serving my best interest, but yet I keep seeming to make the same mistakes over and over again or I'm getting better at making different mistakes, but that same underlying theme keeps showing up. And of course, we've all heard that we're peeling onions and we're learning it in different ways. Yes, but what is the belief? What is the driver? What is our unconscious mind doing that is bringing us to this spot? Because wouldn't it be easier if instead of repeating behaviors, we actually change the belief? Think about it this way. So we have a belief. Maybe the belief is I'm bad at math. That belief is going to create an attitude. And that attitude is going to create a behavior, which is going to create a result, which is going to reinforce the belief. So let me give you an example. Let's say we think we're bad at math. We're in second grade, we'll say. Okay, so I'm really bad at math. That's going to create an attitude of how I'm approaching math class, which then is going to create a behavior of how I'm going to interact with my homework, with my teacher, with how I'm going to try to problem solve, how frustrated I'm going to get or not get, how excited or not excited I'm going to be about the test. And if I think it, I'm bad at math and I'm coming to it with that attitude and that behavior, it's going to create a result that's not so ideal which then is going to reinforce that belief that I'm bad at math and I'm not good at that. Now, we often try to change our belief. Okay, I'm good at math. Or for a more adult experience, I like exercise. 
you know, you try to go to the gym, you try to change your diet, but you hate going to the gym or you hate changing your diet. And all of a sudden, next thing we know, we're in the same loop over and over again because we keep trying to put all this effort into changing our behavior instead of changing the belief. So what if instead we could decide that working out is fun, that we enjoy our new diet, that we attract healthy people in our relationships, that we're good at communicating, that our partner is trying to connect with us. If we make a decision to have those beliefs and actually change those in our unconscious mind, the rest of our life and everything that we do, the way that we react, our attitudes around it, our behaviors around it completely change without much effort at all. Because if we hate working out, we're going to the gym over and over and over again and we hate it. It's much different than saying like, oh, I like working out. This is fun. Everything is going to shift. Does that make sense? So now. This is why it's really important that when we're working with ourselves, when we're looking at our relationships and healing our relationships with others, we actually look at what is it that we need in a person? How do we need to communicate? What are our beliefs about other people's beliefs, how they treat us, how they interact with us? What are the traits that we need in a person that will help us feel confident in our relationship, in our work relationship, in our interpersonal relationships. So imagine said now we get to create ease by focusing on the things in relationship that are really healthy because our mind is deleting, distorting, and generalizing all the time, right? We delete things that we're not aware of. We make generalizations. We can only process about 128 bits of information a second, yet we're inundated with millions of bits of information every second. So what we see consciously are the parts that our unconscious mind is not deleting, is, are not distorting. So when we're looking at our health, in our relationship, and in our past, how do we react? Your brain right now cannot tell the difference between past, present, and future. So I want you to think about an argument that you've had in a past relationship, something that really bothers you. Maybe it's a political belief someone holds. Maybe it was that your husband didn't take out the garbage or that your kids were back talking to you, or you had a teacher that treated you disrespectfully. Think about an argument or a conflict that you've had in a past relationship. Really tune into that for a second and notice what emotions are starting to arise. What are you feeling in your body? Because your brain cannot tell the difference between past, present, and future, everything becomes now, which means that when we're interacting in a relationship currently, so let's say I'm interacting with my significant other, my brain is also looking back at past relationships to say, how am I supposed to react in this situation? Is this a situation of connection? Is this a situation of safety? What do I need to do in order to be heard, seen, to feel loved right now? And that is what our unconscious mind is choosing to do in order for us to get that need met, to get that need met of feeling heard, seen, understood, loved, connected, to get our point across. And now if it's reflecting back on something that we learned when we were three, it may not be the best way of dealing with the situation, which is why sometimes we see um, in relationships, if we saw, let's say our parents, just for example, fighting all the time, or the only way that we got attention when we were young is when we did something bad and our parents yelled at us. 
unconsciously now we have a belief that love equals yelling or love equals being reprimanded. And no matter how safe and how connected and how happy our relationship is, we will unconsciously create conflict because our unconscious mind goes, well, where's the yelling I'm used to? So if that part of us hasn't been healed, we will unconsciously start creating conflict and then be like, why did I get so snippy about that? Why is that bothering me so much? Why do I sound like my mother or my father or that person that I promised I would never, ever do that? And here I am doing the exact same thing that I said I would never, ever do. So isn't it interesting? Have you ever caught yourself doing, saying, or being something that you thought later, why did I do that? Why did I react that way? That is your unconscious mind. So now imagine instead that you can focus on the good in the situation, that you can change that belief, which then changes that behavior. So now when you come to the table with your significant other or your friend or your work situation, you can actually see with clarity and confidence and choice what is truly happening in the situation. And you can choose how you want to interact in a way that feels healthy, that feels aligned with who you are. And this is one thing that emotional freedom techniques or tapping really helps people with, is not only can it help us change some of our belief structures, but it can neutralize the emotions around past situations that then fuel perhaps a behavior or a reaction in our current situation. So let me give you another example. Have you ever thought about a past argument and gotten yourself really worked up and really angry, even though that argument was in the past? And have you ever had a moment where you were going to go talk to somebody and you started making up a story in your head about how they were going to react and then how, what you were going to say back and then what they might say. And then here's what you're going to say. And next thing you know, you're all worked up about it, about this fantastical story that actually has never happened yet. And you get into that situation and you are already ready for that fight or ready to flee or ready to withdraw or ready to defend yourself. And nothing has even happened yet. Have you ever created a story around your relationship? So imagine instead that we can use a technique such as tapping, or we can use a technique to clear the beliefs ahead of time. So now when we come into the situation, our behavior that we want, the calm, the collectedness, the clear communication, the ability to hear the other person, the ability to speak our truth, the ability to set boundaries now becomes super clear and super easy. So imagine instead that we can create that because you can, and it gets to be easy. Did you know that people in unhappy relationships miss 50% of the positive things that their significant other does and says? 50%. Why is that? Because where focus goes, energy flows. So just as I mentioned with the story, with the belief, with the behaviors, whatever we're focused on doing or not doing is actually where our energy is going. So let me give you an example. Don't think of a blue tree. What pops in your head? A blue tree. Because that is where the focus is. So we, we like to say in NLP and in hypnotherapy that the unconscious mind doesn't hear not. It doesn't hear the negatives. It doesn't hear don't do that. So if I say, I'm not going to get angry, I'm not going to get angry, I'm not going to react, what am I focused on? 
I'm focused on the anger. I'm focused on the reaction. And what my unconscious mind, what my mind is starting to behaviorally and emotionally amp up for is the reaction and the anger. So when we can change our focus, we start healing our relationships right now in the present. We start healing our relationships in the future because we're focused on how can I create in my own body, in my own sense of well-being, in my own positioning, how can I create positivity? How can I create a sense of connection and of bonding and of security as I approach the situation right away? How can I look for the things and have gratitude and appreciation right here, right now, in this moment? Have you ever noticed that when you shift your belief around who someone is or who something is, your whole perspective changes, doesn't it? And it gets to. Because once again, whatever we're focusing our mind on is what we are bringing up. So stepping back into relationships, let's just talk about dating for a moment. One of the biggest challenges I see with people that are dating is that they are still often in reaction to past hurts in past relationships. So I'm never going to date a liar again. I'm never going to date a person who always runs late. I'm never going to date a person who is bad at finances. And we're so focused on that aspect that we date someone that has a different challenge, that has a different thing that we don't want. Or we do attract the same energy hidden in a different cloak, right? That, that uh, wolf in sheep's clothing kind of concept. We start attracting the same thing that looks a little bit different. And then we go, how did I not see that? How did I get into another relationship where I got into a similar situation? So now imagine instead that we get really clear on what we want in an individual, and we look for that instead. And by getting clear about what we want, I'm not just saying like, I want someone that's nice and that's trustworthy. And I want someone that's going to treat me with respect. But what are the really deep traits that we need in our friendships, that we need in our relationship? Or you can even apply this to a career. What's the actual thing in a career that makes me happy? Not just how much money will I make or how much time do I have off? But how does this serve my soul at a really deep level? Because I guarantee you, no matter how old you are right now, when you look at relationships, there is something that you have in deep friendships and that you enjoyed in your past relationships that have a deep theme to them. For example... I went through this class called Learning to Find Love, which I now teach. It's one of my EFT relationship courses. When I went through this class the first time for myself, I thought I knew exactly what I wanted in a partner because I'd been doing this work for so long. And then here I am in this course going, I already know what I need, but I have to take this course for my relationship course program and coaching and my certification and all of that, right? And so what I do... I do the exercise and I lay down what are all the things I didn't like in my relationships in the past and I turn those into positives. And then I wrote down what are all the positives I have in, or that I want in a relationship and then I look for themes. And then we narrowed them down. We put them in a grid. The most interesting thing for me that I found is that the number one trait I need in a relationship is playfulness. That had never even crossed my radar as something I needed. But I do. I want someone that's playful with me that wants to play with my nephews. Or, you know, I'm 46 years old. Sometimes I like running under the swings and going on a tire swing and spinning. Or I like rolling down a hill in the middle of nowhere. And I think it's super fun and super playful. I like cooking to be playful. I like dancing just randomly to music or telling really silly dad jokes. So that to me was something I had never even seen in a relationship that wasn't even on my radar that became very, very important. And it was a trait that I needed in a relationship. So why am I bringing this up? 
often when we start looking at what are we running away from? What are those past hurts? What are the things we're trying to avoid? Whether it be traits because we're single or whether it be conflicts with our significant other if we're in relationship. What is it that we're consistently avoiding? That we're saying, I don't want that. Instead of focusing on, here's what I do want. Here's the behavior I want to create. Here are the traits that I want to see. Here are the ways I want our relationship to grow. Because often we overlook challenges because it creates a sense of insecurity or non-safety in our relationships or in our future. So I want you right now to just think, and if you've got a pen and paper, this is really great. Think of one past argument, and I already had you do this a little bit, but I want you to write it down if you can right now. Think of a past argument, one specific moment in time, something that still really bothers you. So for example, let's say I was fighting with my sister two weeks ago. That's a really specific situation, but I can't, I don't want to think about all the times I fought with my sister right now because that's too much. It's too big for this exercise that we're going to do next. So I want you to think about what's a specific argument that you had. Just, and if you've had the argument 20 times, think about one particular day, even if you're making it up because your brain already knows you've had it 20 times. So last Wednesday, when I had the argument with my best friend about politics, Right. Or two weeks ago when I was fighting with my sister. So as you think about that right now, tune in and notice what emotion are you feeling right now? Because we're going to do a little bit of emotional freedom techniques. We're going to do a little bit of tapping, not even on your situation, on something completely different. But I want you to see the power of your mind and how it deletes, distorts, and generalizes information through this exercise. Okay. So you've got your argument. What do you feel about it right now? So for example, maybe when I fought with my sister two weeks ago, I was really, really angry because that's why we were fighting. But right now I feel sad because we fought. So sadness would be the emotion that I'm going to use. And if you have a couple of emotions, because of course situations usually have more than one emotion, just pick the strongest one. Now I want you to take note of how intense is that emotion right now? Zero to 10. Zero meaning it's non-existent, in which case it's not good for this example, but that's where we want to get to. And 10 being it's really overwhelming in this moment. So just take note of that or write it down if you're writing something down. And third, where if anywhere do you feel it in your body? Do you feel a tension in your chest, a churning in your stomach? Do you notice your shoulders are getting tighter? Are you a little wiggly all of a sudden? And, and maybe you just think you're being wiggly, but really it's in your hip or it's in your low back. Or maybe you're getting a little spacey and disconnected because the energy of it is out here. Or maybe it's just in your brain because your brain is so focused on it. So just note, where is it in your body, if anywhere? And you're going to set that aside. And what we're going to do right now is I'm going to bring you through emotional freedom techniques, also known as tapping. Not all tapping is emotional freedom techniques, but we're just going to go through a little rhythm just to get you in tune with the energy of how to move emotion through your system. And we're going to use a made up event that most people have run into in order to make sure that you don't get emotionally upset about the relationship thing right now. So what I want you to do is I want you to tap where I'm tapping and say the words that I'm saying. Okay. So we're going to start with the side of the hand in emotional freedom techniques. doesn't matter what side of the hand you're tapping or what hand you're tapping on. You can go back and forth and just repeat after me. Even though I'm feeling anger in my stomach, thinking about the person that cut me off in traffic yesterday, they could have created an accident. And I accept the way that I feel about it. And even though I'm feeling anger in my stomach, thinking about the person that cut me off in traffic yesterday, they could have caused an accident. I almost hit them. 
and I accept all the ways that I feel about it. Keep tapping on the side of your hand. And even though I'm feeling anger in my stomach, remembering yesterday when that person cut me off in traffic, it was so disrespectful. And I'm open to letting this feeling go. Great. Go ahead and tap on the top of your head and just say, this anger in my stomach. Good. Between the eyes, kind of between your eyebrows here, the anger in my stomach. Good. You're going to tap side of the eyes, one or two hands. If you only have one hand to work with right now, great. Anger in my stomach. Under the eyes on your cheekbone, the anger in my stomach. Under your nose, the anger in my stomach. Under your mouth, the anger in my stomach. Under the collarbones, the anger in my stomach. And under your arms, you can go cross side, same side, doesn't matter. I always tell kids like, act like a monkey, the anger in my stomach. Good, pause, just take a breath. And normally when you're doing this on relationships or whatever you're working with, you would just note, how am I feeling thinking about that same situation? But for the sake of today, we're still gonna play with this road thing. So we're gonna do one more round just to get you in the rhythm of EFT. So side of the hand again, we're gonna change it up. Even though I feel frustrated in my stomach, Thinking about the person that cut me off in traffic yesterday. They weren't paying any attention. They were texting and driving. And if I wasn't paying attention, it could have been super serious. And I'm open to letting this go. And even though I feel frustrated in my stomach, thinking about the person that cut me off in traffic yesterday, they weren't paying any attention. And it was a scary situation. There could have been an accident. I deeply and completely accept myself. Good. And even though I'm feeling frustrated in my stomach, thinking about the person that cut me off yesterday, I accept the way I feel about it and I'm open to letting it go. Top of the head, I'm feeling frustrated in my stomach. Between the eyes, feeling frustrated in my stomach. Side of the eyes, I'm feeling frustrated in my stomach. Under the eyes, I'm feeling frustrated in my stomach. Under the nose, I'm feeling frustrated in my stomach. Under the mouth, I'm feeling frustrated in my stomach. Under the collarbones, I'm feeling frustrated in my stomach. And under the arms, I'm feeling frustrated in my stomach. Good. Now take a breath. And now I want you to tune back into that original situation that you thought about, that original argument. And just notice, what about it has changed? Has your focus about the argument changed? Has the emotion changed? changed? Has the intensity of the emotion changed? Has where you feel it in your body changed? You see, our emotions are all intertwined. And the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. So the way we get reactive to any situation has a common thread to some of our unconscious beliefs about our value our worth, our sense of safety, our ability to interact in the world. And so the majority of you will notice when I've done presentations about this, when I do speaking engagements, when I play with this with my classes, 90% of the people have a change in their relationship, argument, thoughts, after tapping on road rage. So why is that? You see, we are always looking for safety. 
even in our relationships. We're looking for secure attachment. Did you know that most of the time when we're getting into an argument, we're not actually arguing what we think we're arguing about? What we're sensitive about is actually not what we think it is. In other words, if I'm saying, well, you didn't empty the dishwasher and I'm really upset about that, it's not about the dishwasher. What is it about? Maybe I'm not feeling respected because they're not doing what I need them to do. But what's even underneath that lack of respect feeling? Is it that maybe they don't, I don't think I'm enough because of that? Because I'm not feeling lovable? There's usually something very, very deep. And that deep belief is actually what's driving our sensitivity in our relationships, in our careers, in our reactions and arguments, just the same way that we think we're heading to the grocery store and we end up at home. So now, emotional freedom techniques is one of many, many tools that can be used to not only shift the emotional state, but to shift the belief underneath it. I've been practicing emotional freedom techniques for a long time. I also do hypnotherapy. I help with neuro-linguistic programming. I help people shift their relationships in many ways. And usually we also are working with what's my value? What's my worth? What do I really want in my life? How lovable am I? Because somewhere in childhood in that zero to eight, we learned a pattern about how we're not. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're in kindergarten and you've got a teddy bear, right? And you're hanging onto the teddy bear. Another kid comes up to you and tries to take away your teddy bear. And you're like, no, this is my teddy bear. And they want the teddy bear. And you guys start arguing about it. And your teacher comes over and says, oh, just give them the teddy bear. Here, why don't you play with this truck? And so you do. And then you get praised for it. So you may learn unconsciously many things right now. Number one could be, I don't get what I want. I have to give what I want to other people to be loved. Or the only way I receive praise is by doing things for other people. Or we can learn that, oh, we just go along to get along. Or we can just our unconscious mind sometimes go, oh, that's a one-time event. And next time I do get to have what I want because sometimes I get what I want and sometimes I don't, right? We can get healthy beliefs and unhealthy beliefs, quote, unquote, unhealthy beliefs, no matter what situation it is. But see, even something so small like that can form our interactions in relationships, how we hold our boundaries, how we feel safe, secure, loved, wanted, needed, way down the road, even in our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. So now my question for you is, how would you like to learn to shift those beliefs for yourself? How would you like to have tools that would get you that emotional clearing that you could actually use in the moment? Not that you're going to sit there and be like, see what you're doing to me? Look at how angry I am. Now I have to tap on my face in order to calm myself, right? Not like that. However, we can use techniques like tapping in really subtle ways because even holding points, even touching points when we're upset can help our body calm down. And isn't it interesting that when we're stressed out, what do we do? Oh, we naturally rub some of these points on ourselves when we're talking about emotionally stressful situations because it's our body's way of naturally regulating and calming us down. So what I want to do for all of you today, because I don't have time to really teach the full tapping technique, is I'm having an offer and Sharice can put it up. It'll be a link down below. So you can go to this and it's unifiedmind.info forward slash EFT self care. In there, I have a PDF of how to do emotional freedom techniques tapping for yourself. I have a 30 minute video on the benefits, how you can use it for fears, phobias, relationships, cravings, anything that you want to apply it to in your life. There's also a six minute summary. There's another video on the unconscious mind. That's for free. That is my gift for you. And if you choose, I'm doing an offer right now where you can become part of the community for self-care, relationships, intimacy, and sexuality 
for $11 a month in there. I've got hypnotherapy tracks. I've got emotional freedom technique tracks because I want you to be able to learn to empower yourself, to clear some of these beliefs for yourself in as many powerful ways as you can. Are you still getting help? Sure. Like even I see practitioners, right? Everybody should see a practitioner sometimes because we all have blind spots. And these tools will help you live your most empowered, best life that you can. Learn how to regulate yourself neurologically. There's tracks for sleep. There's tracks for all kinds of things. Journaling exercises to empower you. So remember that you get to have powerful relationships. It's our basic human need. It's our basic human right to feel loved, to feel connected, to feel bonded. And when we heal ourselves and our current relationships, we're also healing relationships from the past and we're healing all the ways we get to interact with people in the future. So just remember that you are loved, you are loving, you are lovable. My name is Dawn Bennett with Unified Minds. Thank you so much for listening and have a lovely day.